because it's all about misinformation, disinformation, and propaganda. So that's how the enemy works. The devil operates through lies, lies and lies. And then that's what the lies spread around the world. And you see it's on, on, on all the mainstream media, on the newspapers. They're all controlled by the same people, folks. Uh, Operation Mockingbird took over all the media. So that's why we sit with the problems that we sit today, because people feed on that stuff, and that's what they, they believe. And the universities that, have, that were taken over, standardized of education over 100 years ago, even of the seminaries. So pastors are coming out clueless. Students are graduating out of high school clueless. Uni people graduating out of university totally ill-equipped have no clue what's going on. And it's on. spiritual because you can take one of these zombified people and actually get them connected to God. Suddenly they awaken and go, wow, where was I? What do you call that when they're in a delusion, like under a spell? It's like the, the God of this world has blinded the eyes. There's no other way that the, the enemy has blinded the eyes that they can't see the truth. Killing of Uncle Sam, I just read it a few weeks ago. Pastor Rodney Howard Brown, one of the bravest preachers in the world. And of course, he's an American, but he uh, grew up in South Africa. And we're just uh, really, really pleased to have him. The demise of the United States of America. Now, he gave us 500 books. I've ordered 1,000 more. They're coming in next week. It starts shipping next Tuesday. But he does have audiobooks on CD and at audible.com that also start coming out next week. So we'll be selling those. But I don't care where you get them. Just be sure and get them and we're going to break down the book we're going to cover it all uh with one of my favorite pastors rodney howard brown he was co-wrote it with paul l williams all these former top guys in the cia you name it helped him write the book and yeah, i've yeah. read i've read carol quigley's book i've read you know the, from the globalist's own perspective and i'm telling you this is the book to read this is fast-paced it's thick it's condensed but if you want a phd in the new world order this is the book I mean, you have really put out a masterpiece pastor well, let me tell you how it happened. Thanks for being here. Hey, great to be here. Yeah. yeah, let me tell you how it happened. You know, when uh, when I was looking at the situation in America, and I was I was concerned because I could see that we were heading for another situation whereby they were going to push another Bush or another Clinton. So many people actually have no clue what's taking place. They think that it's a Republican and Democratic thing. It's not. This whole thing's been cooked a long time again. Ago, a Republican and Democrat are two heads of the same snake. So what I was so frustrated about it because, you know, we came to America as missionaries. My wife and I came here 30 years ago with $300 landed in America. And then, of course, we became an American. We had to raise our hands to pledge to defend the Constitution against enemies, foreign or domestic. And here we are watching politicians that also raised their hand to pledge to defend the Constitution, selling, selling America out for pennies on the dollar, which I couldn't even understand. So I felt... When I was looking at this, and we have all the politicians come around the church. You know how they are. They want to all address the congregation. I even had one guy who was running for Congress, and we tell him, if you come to church, you're going to sit in the service. And we, I don't have a 90-hour uh, service or 90 minutes. We have a three-hour-plus service. I'm from Africa. And so I said, you come to my church, you staying for the whole thing. He said, I'm busy. I said, I don't care how busy you are. You're going to stay the whole thing. And if you leave halfway through, I'll denounce you publicly. I'll tell him, don't vote for that guy. He's a... Is a con man. So we had a service, and the guy is in the service. He starts leaving, and I went like this to one of my guys. I went and got him. Said, Pastor said, you better get your butt back in the in the service. He said, you kidding me? He said, no. So he came in. When I gave the altar call, he was the first guy up to come and give his life to the Lord, you know. So anyway, so we, we I'm a radical, you know. I give away AR-15s on a Sunday morning. So, um, but in I felt that we had to go do something. So we went to Constitution Hall. Uh, right by the White House. The Constitution Hall is a historical building. I wanted to get as close to the White House as I could. And, the, you know, of course, Obama's there. And, and, you know, here's the thing. I didn't agree with anything that he was doing because we come from South Africa. So we've already seen the game that's been played. South Africa's sitting right now on the brink of a civil war if we don't see a miracle because it's socialism. It's total communism that's just taken root in every way. Now to land grabs, uh, they've got everybody killing each other. So, but that's another story that I want to discuss now. Uh, so, let's, I, I wanted to cover that next hour. That was on my list. I'm okay. glad you raised that. Yeah. So, so when I saw this, I thought, I have to do something. So I, I said, what can I do to get as close to the White House as possible? So we rented Constitution Hall for 15 nights. And I went 
and I stood up and exposed everything from the private central bank to the way that America is being run. And then, but what I'd done leading up to it, I walked every office of the Congress and the Senate. Uh, it took me eight weeks to do. I took this book, which we call Seeing Jesus as He Really Is, because people think that Jesus is some kind of little um, uh, barefoot with a lamb on his arm speaking Elizabethan English. That's not Jesus, because he took whips and beat the bankers of the day and turned over their tables. Jesus was not a skinny jean, soy latte drinking pastor. He, let me tell you, people, people don't even read the Bible. Then they say, well, Jesus wouldn't do that. Go read the Bible. He did do that. So I took that book, and I took this book, which is The Reality of Life After Death, Heaven and Hell, and we printed 50,000 copies of each, and we stuck this in every office of the Congress and the Senate. Because I didn't know, you know, I'm desperate. I can't, I don't know what we're going to see. What are we going to have? Another, another Bush, another Clinton, which they are friends. They've been household friends. The, the Clintons and the Bushes have been friends. When I was in the back room, uh, they brought, this, this is 94. I'm in the back room getting ready to bring a 94-year-old little lady. She's been on the Hill. Her husband was in Congress in the 60s. And so she's on a walk, and I thought, now... Apparently, they said she worked for Bush Sr. So, uh, so I thought, okay, Rodney, shut up. Do not mention the Bushes. Don't, you know, don't hurt the little lady. So she's sitting there, so I'm quiet, and she, she looks at me. She goes, the Bushes? I said, yes, ma'am. Oh, wicked people, she says. I said, Ruth, how can you say that? She's sort of like, you know, I'm playing dumb, you know. She said, they worship an owl. And she started talking about Bohemian Grove, you know, which you, you exposed. So... Anyway, so I exposed all this stuff. One night after the service, a huge six foot four African American gentleman come to me, put out his hand, very you know surly, shook my hand. He said, "I work for the Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve," and I burst out laughing. And then he said, "Everything you're saying is true," you know. So and then so right after another one of the services, Dr. Paul Williams came to me. He is a former FBI. In actual fact, he uncovered all the ISIS bases in America that the CIA have built to train ISIS to ship them to the areas of the planet that they need to create problems. Because if you have a country that... By the way, you talked about that years ago. Others did. It Now Fox News, it's all confirmed. The witnesses have come forward of Obama and Hillary shipping hundreds of aircraft with heavy weapons, uh, anti-aircraft, uh, rockets, uh, anti-tank tow missiles to them. They did it. But the Bushes were also complicit in Absolutely. all of this stuff and the Clintons. So the whole thing is a cabal. When, when Nelson Mandela died, Air Force One goes to the funeral in South Africa, guess who's on board? The Bushes, the Clintons, and the Obamas. It's like a club. They all, it's pally pally. The American people actually think there's a difference. There is no difference. So Dr. Williams said, I've never heard a preacher talk like you. He said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a writer, I'm a scribe. He said, we need to sit down and document all of this. So we spent many hours from 2014 uh, documenting everything. We could have come out in January. I felt to hold it off till now. May 22nd is going to be released. You can order through InfoWars, uh, the, 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 the actual book, and then the audio book, which you're going to get next week. Um, it'll be available on, on Kindle and every place that you'll be able to get books. What I'm trying to do is to run this thing into airports, into uh, I know Barnes and Noble's working with us, which that's great. Well, it's a beautiful cover, but I it was good enough to make me read it. Plus, I respect you, and it's just I already have researched all this, so I know it's very accurate. But then there were lots of little things I didn't know that added to it. And I went and looked it up, and it was all accurate. So I learned a lot. And, and again, there's so much history. It's a thick book, but it's a lot of little chapters. It moves very, very fast. And what we did was basically we stayed with the money because there were many things. You know how when you go down this trail, there are many rabbit trails. So basically what we decided to do was, was keep it staying around the money. What's the problem in America? Why is America in the condition it's in? Why is it that we vote people into office every four years as a change, and yet we still keep going down the toilet? Is it just, oh, well, it's just politics? That's a bunch of garbage, total garbage. And if you believe that, then you're smoking some of the bad legalized weed that they've already now made. And you about. take the entire... British Empire model, which then was picked up by the corporatist to establish this new world government, and it's all in their own words. This is a real plan. We're breaking down, and the book, The Killing of Uncle Sam, lays it out. Uh, just Because there's a thousand footnotes. The bibliography is 15 pages long. This is all documented. We're actually going to build a website where we actually put video clips of the actual people saying what they're saying. So we're not, we're not making people say, oh, that's a conspiracy theory. Hey, a, a conspiracy is a secret plot to do. A theory is when you think there's one. 
But conspiracy fact. This is conspiracy fact. This is not... And there's one thing they fear. It's getting people to understand there's a conspiracy just like Mueller against Trump. And now it's all been confirmed. But they were so dumb, they bragged when he was president-elect, oh, we spied on him, we've got the goods. Well, they spied, they didn't have the goods. Then they tried to pull back. Now they've been caught perjuring themselves to Congress. When we come back, we'll talk about it uh, with, again, the author of Killing of Uncle Sam, The Demise of the United States of America, Rodney Howard Brown and Paul L. Williams. Incredible book, InfoWarsStore.com. And tell them how to get it from, what's, you've got a lot of websites. What's the best place for them to go? Well, revival.com or, or killingunclesambook.com. But I mean, I want them, I want your viewers to buy from you. Sure, regardless, they just need to read it. That's what yeah. it's all about. And I think you ought to make a film about the uh, killing of Uncle Sam. It's a great name. It's a great book. We'll be back with Mueller caught red-handed, and Giuliani says they're ready to tear them apart. Why do I call it information warfare? Because that's the term that governments use for information, whether it's true or not. Well, we're, we're using the truth. A lot more powerful than the lie, but as Mark Twain said... The, a lie can go halfway around the world before the truth gets up and puts its pants on. Rodney Howard Brown, author of The Killing of Uncle Sam, is here with us. He is on fire on air, but also during the breaks, he's going to define the mark of the beast world government system that's now confirmed, now happening, when we start the next hour. His travels to Australia, his travels to India, his travels all over the world, uh, I mean, for folks that don't know who Rodney Howard Brown is, he's one of the m most prolific missionaries in the world today. And I know you came here wanting to talk about InfoWars and what we're doing and, and, you know, all the news. But briefly, get into what you're doing, your ministry, the other books, the things that are happening and where you see the world at this pivotal, uh, I guess, last reprieve or you were during the break calling it something else. We have a window. Window, window. Yeah, we have a window to turn this thing around. So when my wife and I came here 30 years ago, uh, we landed the country uh, December 1987, landed with $300, didn't hardly know anybody, just knew that I was supposed to come here as a missionary. And so it was a long process for me even to become a United States citizen. Went through the ringer. That's why I'm against illegals coming across the border. There's a right way of coming and a wrong way of coming. And if you come, then you adopt the American way of life, period. And you adopt the Constitution. You do not come here with subversive ideas of overthrowing a country or diluting the way that this country is. America is America. John Wayne, Clint Eastwood, if you don't like that, head on out, baby. So I, uh, so we, we came. So here we are. We, we arrive in America uh, December 1987, and I traveled, just my wife, myself, three kids in a, in a vehicle, going all across America, little churches, just, you know, praying, really trying to find our feet of what we're supposed to be doing. And then in April of 89, a revival broke out in upstate New York that carried us now to 59 countries. And it's controversial because if you go back to the first great awakenings, you see what happened where the power of God would overwhelm whole places and people would be overwhelmed spiritually. And it's spiritual. The enemy can feel it, though. And we can feel the revival uh, just to understanding information is about to break out. Correct. So, so what happens is because in our meetings we have a lot of joy, which I'm actually a very serious person because I realize the battle that we're up against, but people get filled with joy. So we were attacked by the religious sector. People try to block us. So, Alex, I mean, 1989, 99. No, I agree. 91. You're right. We've got to be happier about this because at least we're awake and aren't overtaken by the enemy. Even well, though we get upset by the bad stuff happening, we should be really positive that we're at least awake. And the Bible says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Plus, when the disciples came to Jesus and they said, you know, even the devil is subject to us through, uh, through your name. He, he, Jesus didn't say, oh, that's great. I'm so happy to know. He said, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. He said, don't rejoice that devils are subject to you, but rejoice that your name's lit, written now in the Lamb's book of life. And you go through many of the church and they sad, I mean, we go to churches, one hour dry cleaning service, in by 10, out by 11. I mean, you're so happy when it's finished because it's boring. There's no life. There's no strength. But if you hear a real preacher in the Holy Ghost, you don't want to leave. Exactly. In actual fact, if we, we did three, three and a half hours. Sometimes in our conferences, which start the Sunday through Sunday, eight days, two meetings a day, 16 meetings. And the service will go five hours. Nobody wants to go home. I have to tell the crowd, okay, the service is over. It's finished now. You can go home. Nobody wants to leave. If I don't leave the platform, they don't leave. So uh, people say, oh, you, people won't endure that. 
Are you kidding me? They go watch movies for hours. Listen, I'm not even as, 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 as strong as you are. Before they dialed us back on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, I could just be calmly talking, and it would just it would build up like a million watching, and, and they wouldn't go away. They'd say, don't stop it. There's a hunger for, for exposing evil. And people, people, people are hungry for the truth, and they already know. People in their gut know that they've been sold a bill of goods. So anyway, so when you look at what's taking place, we, we have a window. So anyway... Uh, getting back to our, what we're doing. So we've been going from church to church with revival, trying to revive dead churches, get pastors on fire, get the people doing what they're trying to ignite the spirit. And yeah, because of the great commission, which is going to all the world and preach the gospel. If we are quiet about it, Islam is not quiet about what they're doing. There are more mosques being built in America. They are charging yeah. forward, spending all their money, buying off the media. Just they are... And 95% of the American church... Well, that's the thing, is we're being assaulted and raped by it because Christians don't blow you up to make you accept it. They don't get in your face. They don't boycott you. But the Muslims, that's why the left loves them because you add those two groups together. Or any, or all the atheists, or all the other people. Why are the, why are the atheists and liberals and, and, and Islam allied? Because they hate God. They hate God. But here's the thing. So if 95% of the American church do not tell another person about Jesus, they never tell. They never tell. 95% of the people sitting in the pews never tell another person about Jesus. But if they see a great movie, they tell you, hey, you got to see this movie. They go to a nice restaurant. Hey, you They've taught to us to be ashamed. Totally. So now, so they go to church, they do their thing, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, there's nothing. But what did Christ say? He said, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. Correct. And he said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. In actual fact, he said, compel the lost and dying to come in. So, so what we do is go to churches, put the fire of God on them, and then mobilize them during the day on the streets to go and evangelize schools, universities, retirement homes, Prisons. Which, by the way, I've talked to high-level Google people. They are more afraid of anything of real Christians. Uh, even Jade Helm talks about motivated Christians, motivated individuals who then get on the street because the act of physically in the third dimension taking action is is is, is so uh, so frightening to the whole Silicon Valley because they want to get us into virtual reality and get us out of the real world and teach us that there's no power in the real world, only online, as they even take the power away from being online. Correct. And the big thing is face-to-face. -face. When you meet people and you, and you look into their eyes, they can see if this is a real or is phony. Now, religious people can do this. If they're just religious, nobody's going to follow them. But when people come that know that know Jesus, when they come to them and they look in the eyes, people say, I can Well, that's the thing. Devil worshipers and people in the occult are seeking for discernment and, and real knowledge. But I'm, And I'm not a perfect person, but I have a relationship with God. The discernment and the knowledge is like so powerful. that you, I even deal with globalists, and they're like slaves compartmentalized to their one little system of control. They're given power by the system, but they have no power. No. They're slaves. And you, you actually tune into Christ. It's like so big, you're like, I can't believe I've got this much power. And then these Satanists have no idea. They're searching for power, and the power is right there. And what, which is what Jesus told the disciples. You can read in John 4, he talked about a well of water springing up to everlasting life. John 7, he's talked about out of your innermost being will flow rivers of living water. So he's talking about the Holy Spirit. Then Jesus is the one that told the disciples to go tarry at Jerusalem. And he said, you would be endured with power. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me. So it's not so we can sit in a pew or sit in the church or just have a nice little time. No, you're getting so, charged up in the church with the brethren to, to then go, go out. Something. To go do something. And everybody has to do something. Every man... You don't, you don't plug a device into a wall to then have it sit there. You're plugging it in to unplug it and go out and do something. Totally. But uh, by the same devo uh, thing, if we bring an electric appliance in here, we plug it in and switch the switch on. So a lot of people are praying for what they already have. They're praying, oh, God, please help us. God's already done everything to help you. Jesus went to the cross. The Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost. God is not dead. And I don't have to watch a movie to know that he's not dead. He's not dead. I don't, have to, I don't have to watch God's Not Dead 1 and 2 to know he's not dead. He's alive. And alive but how can people even deny it when everything in Revelation is now coming true exactly? Because I mean, world, we're going to cover it next hour, but, I mean, it is, it is. I, I really fear for people that don't have Christ because I get hit with stuff, and, I, and, I, and all I do is call on Christ, and then I just have all this strength. Yeah. I, I, I'm so sorry people that don't have this. People are not going to make it with what's coming.
They're not going to make it with what's coming because many people are not prepared. They don't know how to pray. If you pray, God will tell you what to do. If you pray, it's, isn't it amazing? If you if you actually open yourself up, it's incredible. It's like the advanced understanding is it, it's, it, it makes you humble. Even when you like when you go to sleep at night, now the next day you have to deal with some major stuff. So you say, Lord, I'm going to go to sleep, and I pray that when I wake up, I'll know exactly what to do. Many times I get up in the morning and I know do this, do this, do this. And it's the most amazing thing because the Holy Spirit's been sent to help us. He's the unseen one. People think that the Holy Spirit is a manifestation. These devil worshipers are killing little kids so a big demon gets in them to give them power. When the, the creator of the entire universe is ready to already give you the real power. Totally. Well, that's what Hollywood have to actually take on spirits to actually act. You remember, I think it was Jack Nicholson said to um, the guy that was going to play uh, the... Uh, I forget the name. No, they admit it. Bob he, Dylan said, no, I had to sell my soul to Lucifer. But he, he said, uh, that, that kid that died, man, he was playing, was in the Batman movie or whatever. He said, don't don't play that part. Don't play that. It's a dark part. He said, do, do not play that part. Well, he went and played it, and of course he died. So the thing is, is people sell their soul to Lucifer, and then he comes to collect them. Major singers, major actors, major people out there that are wanting money. They want fame and fortune, so they sell their soul to the devil, and then he comes and takes them. We'll be right back. Here's a fact. The big technocrats say they want full control of your consciousness. They're now saying you're going to have to die to have your brain uploaded. I mean, this is such a con job. that you think you're talking to your dad or your mom, it's really just a computer facsimile, how for decades they can fake videos, they can fake audio. Now the politicians are making a big deal out of this because they're a lot of them have been blackmailed. They know real videos are coming out, so they want to spin it. But it could also could be faked videos because I've had Megyn Kelly when I said Hillary Clinton is responsible for killing children in the Arab Spring and murdering them by funding it. And then I showed news articles. She edited the video together, made it audio before she left Fox News, and had me saying that they were murdering children in a pizza uh, place to then discredit larger investigations. So. They don't need high-tech stuff to do that. They're already deceptively editing. Can you speak to that? Yeah, because it's all about misinformation, disinformation, and propaganda. So that's how the enemy works. The devil operates through lies, lies and lies. And then that's what the lies spread around the world. And you see it's on, on, on all the mainstream media, on the newspapers. They're all controlled by the same people, folks. The Operation Mockingbird took over all the media. So that's why we sit with the problems that we sit today, because people feed on that stuff, and that's what they, they believe. And the universities that, have, that were taken over, standardized of education over 100 years ago, even of the seminaries. So pastors are coming out clueless. Students are graduating out of high school clueless. Uni people graduating out of university totally ill-equipped, have no clue what's going and on. And it's spiritual, because... You can take one of these zombified people and actually get them connected to God. Suddenly they awaken and go, wow, where was I? What do you call that when they're in a delusion, like under a spell? It's like the, the God of this world has blinded their eyes. There's no other way that the, the enemy has blinded their eyes that they can't see the truth. And so they, that's the way they lean, where they, you know, they accuse us of being, you know, we just right-wing conspiracy or whatever. No, we've actually looked at the facts. You know, when you travel 59 countries of the world, we, I see the same scenario repeated in all the countries that we go to. It's just different names, different players, but it's the same narrative. That's it. The devil is very formulaic, which is the strength, but also its weakness. But it is exactly formulaic. Well, look what he did to Adam. He said, if you do, I, I, I'll give you all of this. I mean, basically, he came to Jesus. He said, if you, if you will bow down before me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. Adam was the one that sold everything out to, to Lucifer. And so that's... When you by the way, when I was offered by the biggest syndicator in the country, the book deals, the Fox deals, uh, the $10 million a year, all this stuff, and that's $10 million to me, not $10 million to fund an operation. Sure, sure. And of course, it meant nothing because I knew it was a sellout because they said, we'll control you. It was just like that. I was up in a high building and looking down on, on New York, and it was just like the devil. And then they even made devil jokes. And then Mark Dice got called into Hollywood. They wanted to give him a national TV show with one of the uh, guys from uh, Motley Crue. And they said, but we just want you to say you denounce Christ. He says, this is a joke. They said, no, you got the show. You're going to make a million dollars a year. Just announce Jesus right now. And Mark went, wow, this is really real. And they said, yeah, no, it's real. Yeah, no. I mean, I mean, they take you up in buildings and tell you. It's blatant. It's just like with Christ. Sure. They do the same thing. That's what I'm telling you. It's like a, a program. It's, it's it, There's nothing there. It's like a...
Sure. But the bombardment starts with the daycare. From, from right, little kids bombarded in daycare all the way to primary school, high school, and university. So I try to tell parents, teach your own kids, do homeschool. You know, there's programs that you can get where kids will actually, well, by the time they graduate, be way ahead of any We're going to talk about solutions are going to break. When yes. I, but when I told you that story, you know, Mark Dice has come on and talked about it. And he, you know, he's had big national shows and stuff. They really told him that. Unbelievable. Uh, I, they wouldn't do that to you, the pastors. They know. I'm telling you, with people like me, a long time ago, when I was like 25 years old, they point blank. But they didn't say, hey, we're devil worshippers. But it was like you're up in a big building. They're going, you can have all this. Don't you want it? <laughs> Unbelievable. But I'm saying, how weird is that that they repeat the same thing over and over again? Sure. Well, it's a, it's the same. That's that's why we put this out, because it's the same history repeats itself over and over. Folks, the mark of the beast, world government, at least a prototype of it, is here. Prophecy has been fulfilled. We're going to talk about it with Pastor Brown on the other side, the author of Killing of Uncle Sam at InfoWarsStore.com. Stay with us. The book is The Killing of Uncle Sam. It comes out next Tuesday. We're selling it at InfoWarsStore.com. You can find the audio books and everywhere else. Uh, it, it's going to be great because that's how I really read books now is audio books. But I got an advanced copy. This is one of the last books I've read in the last six months, uh, The Killing of Uncle Sam. And I don't care where you get it. Where is the best place for people to get it? InfoWars. But tell people your site, too. Okay, Revival.com. It will ki the KillingUncleSamBook.com. Or go, here's what will really help, too. If you're out, go to Barnes & Noble and, and, and tell them, please stock the book. If you're flying anywhere through an airport, go to the airport bookstores. Ask them. Yes. And people don't get, it's that word of mouth, especially in the digital age, trumps everything. Correct. So we need to get the word out because we don't want this book stopped. We want to get this information out. And let me say this. I don't even take a royalty from it. Neither does my co-author, Paul Williams. But I hope you make money on it. You need to fund your operation. Yeah, it's going to go to our school of government. We started a school of government. I know you gave me 500 copies. I appreciate it. Yeah, I wanted to be a part of what you're doing. Because what you're doing is vital. By the way, I've, I've, I've watched you for years, a decade on TV, listened to you. You were taken back when I told you about the Mark Dice. We've had him on. These clips are real. Mark Dice, you're the media critic. Oh, I watched him, yeah. Yeah, billions of views, probably a billion views. He, he, they actually got him up before he would be given this national TV show. And I even know the company he was involved in because I did some TV stuff. They didn't ever tell me, hey, we want you to reject Jesus or anything. But they did with him. And I've talked to other people in Hollywood where they actually ask you to renounce Christ. Well, I don't doubt that for one second. So that's the attack. That's, that's the whole attack. So I feel that we have a last-minute reprieve, Alex. I really feel that, I, you know, 2008 was a real critical year for us. Before, you know, we were just looking at where America was headed. And I was, I was actually speaking in, in Phoenix, Arizona. And on a Monday night, as I was preaching, I just began to speak this out, come right out of my spirit. And I said, it was really talking to the church. It's like I heard the Lord say, tell the church to speak to the sun. And tell the sun, no, you can't set just yet. But the sun is fast setting on the horizon of time. But just like Joshua commanded the sun and the moon to stand still, and the Lord gave him one more day. The Lord said, I will give you one more hour, one more hour of daylight. So I kind of figured, okay, what's an hour of daylight? If a thousand years a day, days a thousand years, that'll be 40 years. So I said, okay, great. That'll put me into my late 80s, and we can smack this thing up the side of the head. And, we, and that's the hour, because here's the thing. A hundred years from now, we'll be in heaven, you and me. And then we look at each other, and we think, did we play the fool with our life on the earth? Because was there more that we could have done? Could we have well, done? that's the feeling I constantly have is not that I'm big enough or a good man or any of this. I feel like with all I've got, I should be doing more, and I'm constantly frustrated. Uh, and then in my gut, God just says, look, just trust in God, be, be good, be strong, I, tell I the truth, it's all going to work never, out. That'll never go away because it's all that's the thing that causes you to reach out. So that'll never go away. So be encouraged about that because I deal with the exact same thing. So, I mean, when, when we... It can be midnight, and I feel like I haven't done enough. Oh, yeah. So in Because we know it's like this evil is coming. Yeah. 2007, 8, and 9, we went to 55 cities across America and saw 1.1 million people give their lives to the Lord. That's in schools, retirement homes. We went to all the retirement homes where people were dying, left by their families, and people were confessing Jesus and praying with us. Some of the ladies, they actually prayed. People prayed, and their last words were, uh, 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 thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And they died. They died right as they prayed the prayer. And you know they were probably waiting for that. They were. Well, here's one classic example. They, one it's like my dad's mom, my mom. She was a Christian, but she waited till my dad got there to die. She's like, oh, you're here, and died. What, what happened? Uh, one of our people that we trained went into a retirement home. This lady, 83 years of age, she's sitting curled up in a fetal position. And Alex, 
no family, no body, no food. She's only given water. She's dying. And she's groaning. Uh, uh, and one of our people shook her away. And she looked right up in the aisle. She didn't know who it was. And she said, my soul is lost. So she knew she was dying and there was nobody there to, to pray with her before she died. And they prayed with her right there, led her to Christ immediately. They went down to the next room. 20 minutes later, they went by and there was a sheet covering this lady. They plucked her right out of the jaws of hell. And so we, the church, the church That's thinks, powerful. That's like right on the cross. It, 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 amazing, amazing. The church thinks that we got to wait for everybody to that come. That brings tears to my eyes to think about how people warehouse their parents and then they die alone and then these people don't think they're not going to die like that i mean right there that's a test right there if you don't take care of your parents you know we've got to reach we've got to win the lost a alex you know uh, the bible says he who wins souls is wise john 3 16 for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life and then the bible says god did not send his son of the world to condemn the world so god's not against anybody he loves everybody and but he wants people to know that the price was paid on calvary jesus did it all and you by the way we know because the whole wicked anti-human system that dumbs people down that sterilizes that poisons the earth everything out of it is evil nothing good it hates christ doesn't hate the fake churches that's, that's, that's the, the counterfeit and it that's hates the christ. Antichrist. that's the antichrist antichrist spirit is anything that's antichrist which he came to give life. And you look at Hollywood, Bezos, all of it. It's totally anti-Christ. Totally. We're going to go to break. <laughs> a few, like four minutes. I want you to get out of the floor. But got tears in my eyes thinking about that powerful story. But I want you to specifically speak uh, to just, it, it, I mean, like time frames, reprieve, so people understand this. Because so many Christians think they're just dead and they don't have any power to change some timeline. And But you look at Nineveh and other cases in the Bible and history of big reprieves show that there can be a bigger plan, other things can happen. And, and as I think we say a window, you mean like a Nineveh reprieve. Correct. So like you take Jonah. So yes, Jonah, God tells him to go to Nineveh and he doesn't want to go. So what does he do? He takes a cruise. So he's sitting on this boat, eating seafood, then all hell breaks loose. And guess who gets thrown overboard? Jonah. Now he becomes seafood. So this fish swallows him up. Now he's inside the belly of the fish. Now he's got to do some praying. Wouldn't you pray if you were in the belly of a fish? I'd be praying. You know what I mean? Because you know the way out is not the way you came in. Think about the process of being in a digestive system of a fish. So he's there for three days. He prays. He cries out. And the fish, thankfully, vomits him out. So no wonder when Jonah went to Nineveh and said, repent, they all repented. Said, look at this guy, he looks like crap. You know what I mean? So they all repented and the whole, the whole of Nineveh turned because Jonah went to go and obey God. Ultimately, but he went through the belly of a fish. God doesn't want you to go through a belly of a fish. He just wants you to obey. Here's the thing. Not everybody's going to stand in the church and preach like do what I do, but everybody should be vocal. You've got to use, and don't come tell me that you don't, you shy and embarrassed. I'll take your cell phone and we'll see your collective talk time on your cell phone and I'll show you that you are not shy and embarrassed to talk about the things that are important to you. You have to get radical. It's time for Americans to stand up. You can't leave this to a Sunday morning, one hour thing on a well, Sunday Well, that's the night. thing is we've got this whole global government program, but the one thing it doesn't want you to be is Christian and speaking out and, and talking to other people. It wants you to just shut up and talk about Netflix and talk about all this stuff, but all of that is killing us. Totally, because it's distracting from the main point. The fact is the matter that what would happen if you're watching the program right now, but tonight, listen to me, you put your head on your pillow in the middle of the night, you fall asleep and never wake up. Where are you going to go? Somebody said, well, I don't believe in that. Well, that's fine. But you know what? You don't want to be on the other side of that and then find out that you heard me talk along these lines and that you never... But if you study life. the globalists, they're obsessed with energy and spirits and the dimensions and that they, they're, they're caught in this evil thing. They don't want us to go up to God. Because they want us to go down to them. And they're trying to become God. It's like the tower. They're, they're trying to build here on earth. Exactly. They're trying to take genetics and saying, I don't believe in God yet. I'm going to be God. It's like a tower of Babel. They and, and why do the globalists all say, we have to have world government and exterminate humanity, and then the AI machines will let us merge with them. And even Elon Musk says he meets with all these billionaires. They all go, I worship the spirit, and it will be in the computer, and I will merge, and everyone else will die. And he's like, what kind of cult are you in? Why are you all saying we're going to kill everybody? 
because there's some satanic interdimensional force, whatever you want to call it, Satan, pushing through doing this. Yeah, well, you can just go to the Georgia Guidestones, what's directed right outside of Atlanta, the whole plan to reduce... Paid, paid for by Ted Turner. Reduce the world's population to 500 million people because they feel like the world's overpopulated, which you know that the scientists said that we could have 10 billion people on the planet. Put them all in Texas. But <laughs> No, but we could have 10 billion people on the planet and would never get more than that. Just by de death and birth, it would stay at that. Well, it's already going to peak out. They're thinking about 9 billion. Yeah, but God never put the earth here to run out of anything. Never. And, and the Bible says as long as the earth remains seed time and harvest, day and night, summer and winter will not cease. Will not cease. That's in the book of Genesis. We come back, though. The Mark of the Beast world government system, it's here. We're going to break it down. You know, someone very profoundly once said many years ago that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of, li of liberalism. He goes to jail. He goes to jail. If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. You just saw a short excerpt of the full interview we did with this notable awakened human. If you want to see the full unedited interview, go to InfoWars Interviews online. We have links below and we have links to the side to our other channels, but the full interviews are being posted to InfoWars Interviews online on YouTube and other platforms. And you can always find the full live transmission at InfoWars.com forward slash show. Guaranteeing your food independence is a crucial part of prepping. Between debt crisis, natural disasters, or even simple power outages, having a supply of storable meals is crucial. With InfoWars Life Select Storable Food, you can make sure you and your family are ready for any emergency. With drinks, snacks, and meals in amounts ranging from 72 hours to a full year, there's no better place to look for healthy, easy, and incredible meals. Including meals such as traveler stew, homestyle potato soup, and a variety of other meals for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, InfoWars Life Select Storable Food will help you eat comfortably in a time of need. They even work great for camping. Simply pack a 72-hour kit to go and you have easy to cook and transport food for you and your loved one's trip. Don't be caught surprised by an emergency. Make sure you're stocked up today with all the food you need for an affordable price with InfoWars Life Select Storable Foods.